This morning our subject is how to surrender to God. न जना दान न चन जोग न जना तंत्र न चोत्र मंत्र न जना पूजा न च न्यास जोग गतिस्थ गतिस्थमेका भवानी न जना पुण्य न जना तीर्थ न जना मुक्ति लयम व कदाचि न जना भक्ति व्रत वापि माता गतिस्थ गतिस्थमेका भवानी ओ मदर आई हैव मेड नो चैरिटी आई हैव डन नो मेडिटेशन आई हैव ऑब्जर्व नो रिचुअल्स नॉट हैव आई अटर्ड एनी प्रेयर और होली नेम I have performed no worship, nor have I purified myself through proper invocations. Therefore, O thou Mother of the Universe, thou art my only refuge. Thou art my only refuge. O Mother, pious deeds and pilgrimages to holy places, I have performed none. I have never yearned after salvation. Nor aspire to get merged in the divine. I possess no devotion, nor have I observed any vows even. Therefore, O thou mother of the universe, thou art the only refuge. Thou art my only refuge. Om Shanti, 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 peace, peace, peace be with you. This morning our subject is how to surrender to God. In the Old Testament, Job said, "God has given everything to me, and He has taken away. Naked came I from mother's womb, and naked I will depart from this world. Praise the name of the Lord." this statement reminds us how we come to this world and how we depart from this world i was deeply thinking about human life our life begins with helplessness and hopelessness and ends in also in hopelessness and helplessness when we come out from the mother's womb we surrender to our mother's 100% not 99% if mother does not protect the child the child will die similarly in old age when we are incapable to do anything we also surrender to our family members or to the nurses and doctors in the nursing home who are helpless if they do not feed us we cannot eat we shall die this is the truth we shall have to accept it in the beginning we are helpless in the end we are helpless amazing in between we depend on our selves ego god gave us hands and feet to work to do everything we want to do
And the moment we enter this world with our egos, we find a lot of weight, burden, responsibility on our shoulders that we are carrying all the time. Heavy responsibility. Sometimes it is, sometimes we get tired. Oof, so much burden. So much duties, so many duties and responsibilities. What is the way out? This world is Maya. Maya brings all this burden. I was reading the other day, due to the law of gravitation, the weight of 82 pounds in the earth is 2 pounds in the moon. In the moon. But as you have seen when the people land in the moon, how they as if they are flying, they have no balance. They have no body weight. Because they went very high. Below, on this earth, very powerful. Dato Maharaj used to give an example. If I ask you to carry two buckets of water to put water into the garden, you say that these two buckets are very heavy. But when you are in the swimming pool, you are below the water, perhaps hundred buckets of water above your head, you do not feel it. You do not feel the weight. Just see. A little fish can go against the current of the water. But a big elephant cannot go away one inch. The big elephant is carried away by the current. Why? Because the abode, the home of the fish is water. And the home and abode of the big elephant, powerful elephant is on the earth. So if we can make our life god center, if we make God is our home, then we can go against current. Again, we can feel this world, this heaviness, this burden, this responsibility, duties become very light. We won't feel it. That is the secret. Krishna says, Jat Karushi Jadashnashi Jad Jadushi Jad Jadushi Dadashi Jad Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you whatever sacrifices you make, whatever austerities you practice, offer everything to me. Surrender. Kalipada Ghosh, a householder devotee of Sri Ramakrishna, was a drunkard and character was extremely bad. One day he came to Dakshinishar. Sri Ramakrishna said, I like to go to Calcutta. Sir, my boat is ready, why don't you come? Sri Ramakrishna went in his boat. And this man, Kalipada, asked the boatman to, to row the boat in the middle of the Ganges river. And when it came in the middle of the Ganges, Kalipada grabbed Sri Ramakrishna's both feet and said, Master, I am a rogue. I am a very bad person. But I surrendered myself to you. I have money. I have wife, I have children, I have family, I have big business. But I know when I shall die, I, nobody will go with me. I shall see deep darkness. You promise? 
that he will take me at the time of my death. He grabs in Ramakrishna's speech. Ramakrishna says, what are you doing? They bring me in the middle of the river? You are a drunkard? Master, you will have to promise, otherwise I won't let you go. Sri Ramakrishna says, all right, all right. Sri Ramakrishna promised. And at the time of death, people saw that his right hand was up and he passed away. Sri Ramakrishna kept his promise. That is the result we get from self-surrender. What sh when we shall die? Sometimes I ask this question. As I told you, we came naked, we shall go naked. Money, wife, children, family, home, car, nothing will go with us. What will go with you? Brother Nagupanishad says, Jagobalko mentioned, only these three things will go with you. Vidya, Karma, Purva, Prigya. Vidya, knowledge, wisdom, which we have gathered in this life, that will go with us. Karma, good and bad, whatever we have done, the result of that karma will go with us. And Purva Prigya, previous lives, samskaras and impressions, they will go with us. Why should they surrender to God? Oh, we have so much intense and powerful ego, we do not like to bend. <laughs> we are strong, we earn money, so we are healthy. Why should I bow, bow down or why should I take surrender? <laughs> Look at Swami Vivekananda. He was physically, mentally, intellectually strong. Ethically, morally, spiritually strong. That Vivekananda was helpless. Came to Sri Ramakrishna, Sir, I cannot bear the misery of my mother and my brother, sisters. You will have to do something to me. I know you, the Divine Mother listens to you. You please tell Divine Mother about me. I am helpless. I am really helpless. See, Ramakrishna said, I told Mother, Mother said he doesn't believe in me, so I cannot do anything for him. Sir, I do not know your mother. All right? Today is an auspicious day. You go to the temple in the evening. Whatever you will ask, Mother will give to you. And he went three times, he could not pray, <laughs> he could not ask money or anything. At last Sri Ramakrishna blessed him and said, your family will never suffer from plain food and plain clothing. Look, Vivekananda was helpless. Look, Urjuna's condition. He is the most powerful hero in the whole Mahabharata. Helpless. Look what he said to Krishna. Karpanna dhushapata sabhava pritchame tvang dharma sangmura chetaha jasriyasyad bruhitan me shishas deham shadi mangtam prapannam. Oh Krishna, I feel terribly weak. I cannot understand what is my true dharma. Karpana dosha path shangmura. I am really confused. I do not see what is my duty right now in the battlefield. Do I have come to fight? Shishya stay home. I want to be your disciple. Shishya. Shadi maam tam prapannam. Prapannam means I take refuge in you. Guide me. Look. We are not more powerful than Arjuna. He is helpless. But I am powerful. I, why should I take refuge in God? <laughs> I was watching then John Jobs, the person who invented that Apple, iPad, iPhone, pancreas cancer. He had so much money. All best doctors in the world was un were under his di di disposal. Helpless. 
could not save his life. Just see, and we think we, we are powerful. <laughs> Our problem is ego, very strong ego. This helpless, hopeless ego want to maintain the individuality. We are individuals. Madame Azal Kalve, the famous opera singer, came to Vivi Karanda. Shamiji asked her that you know her daughter died, broken hearted. Shamiji consoled her and said, Have you just try to maintain your calmness, strength of the mind? And forget your ego. Oh no, I cannot forget my ego. I am an individual. Swami is saying, Madam, you are crying like a bubble in the ocean. The, there are some bubbles are floating in the ocean. The ocean says, be with, with us, with me. But the bubble says, no, 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 we must preserve our individuality. But the ocean says, billions of bubbles become one with me. And you are one to protect you. Any touch of that bubble can burst and become one with the ocean. So all these individual beings have that bubble individuality. Any moment it can burst. Ramakrishna gave a famous mantra to all of us in this Kali Yuga. This is the ego breaking mantra. Naham, naham, tuhum, tuhum, natai, natai. But thou, thou. Of course, in that connection, Sri Ramakrishna told the parable that when a cow dies, they take the entrails and they make a, they, they break the cotton, cutting the cotton, cotton, and it makes a sound. When the calf is young, he says, Amma, Amma, mother, mother, Amma, 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 finally, Tuhu, Tuhu. It makes the sound, thou, thou. That is a beautiful parable of Sri Ramakrishna. This is spiritual ego, Sri Ramakrishna said, we can spiritualize our ego. I am a devotee of God, I am a child of God, I am a servant of God. In this way we can spiritualize our ego. Aham Brahmasmi, again you can spiritualize ego, I am Brahman or I am your servant. Ego. Vivekananda, this ego, according to Vedanta, can be expanded, can be contracted. Vivekananda's ego was expanded. Nagmasha, a devotee of Sri Ramakrishna, his ego was contracted. He was the embodiment of humility. Girish Ghosh made a beautiful comment about these two persons. But the Mahamaya, the Divine Mother, is in deep trouble. She tried to bind these two persons, but could not bind them. The moment she tried with the rope to bind Vivekananda, he becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. The rope becomes insufficient. And the moment she tried to, <coughs> she tried to bind Nagmasha, he becomes a smaller and a smaller and a smaller and goes through the hole, so he could not be bound either. Very beautiful analogy. This world is a play of ego. I and my. What is this ego? This ego is the reflection of the Atman, Brahman, on the mind. That is the reason we call it eye consciousness. Eye consciousness, egocentric and cosmocentric. That is Brahman and I, Brahman and I. 
Is this eye consciousness real? That is the, that eye is real. Look, you will stand in front of a mirror and see your face. You see the reflection of your face on the mirror. If somebody hits that reflected face, will you get pain? No. Because that is unreal face. But if somebody hits on your face, you will get pain. That is your real face. So the ego, that reflected ego, is the false I. The real I is consciousness, that you are Brahman. That Vedanta teaches. We are hypnotized. We are thinking, I am Chetananda, I am a Swami, I am this, I am that. Wrong. I am Brahman. That is right. When John Swamiji was lecturing in America, he said, Madam, it is a mistake you think that you are a woman, you are an American. Why are you limiting yourself from that little self? You are Brahman. You want that God, supreme reality. That is your true nature. But you put on this flesh and bone and the pay head, all these things, you are limiting yourself. You know, these teachings of Vedanta are very deep. Sri Ramakrishna Vishnu says, Ami mole ghuchi be janjal. When I shall be free, when I cease to be, this I must go. I and mind. Day and night, well, without I and mind, there is no world. Think of that. I am no Chetananda, I am nothing. I am learned, I am beautiful, I am intelligent, I am president, I am prime minister, I am senator, I am this, I am a minister. This I and I, my home, my family, my. This I and my are the warp and whoop of Maya. And Maya binds us through this I and my. Think of that, you, have, you are nobodies and you have nothing, the whole world will vanish. That we try to do during meditation. We merge our I consciousness with cosmic consciousness. We surrender this little self to God, Brahman, and we face ourselves. That is the real self-surrender. You know, I and my, I still remember in our village, you know this village where women are so wise. Somebody asked, is he your son? The mother will answer, Bhagavan Diyachan, God has given to me. She did not claim that this is my son. That should be our attitude. Everything belongs to God. I sometimes say that, you know, I, I am the head Swami here, but I believe that I am the caretaker of this Sri Ramakrishna's place. This place doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Sri Ramakrishna. I am just a caretaker. And the devotees also help, the monks also help. We are trying to create a spiritual atmosphere in this place. That's all. Ego. Shankara went one step further. He mentioned in Viveku Churamuni, verse, verse 302. It is a beautiful analogy. Brahmananda Nidhi Mahabalata Ahankara Ghoro Ahina. Brahmananda Nidhi. Nidhi means jewel. This bliss of Brahman is the jewel. And a big serpent, very poisonous, with three hoods. That serpent is ego. So that ego, the snake is coiled up, and the jewel that Brahman and the Nidhi is inside in that coiled up snake. If anybody wants to take it, that snake with three hoods will bite and attack. What are those three hoods? 
Shatta, Raja, Tamo, Guna, the three Gunas. These three Gunas, the big serpent, very poisonous, will not allow anybody to go to get that Brahmananda Nidhi, the jewel, the bliss of Brahman. How to get it? Dhira, the person who has changed wisdom. That Dhira, with the sharp sword of discrimination, behead that three hooves of the snake and picks up the jewel. That is the way Shankara mentioned in the creature discrimination how to get that bliss of Brahman. Cut the ego. I remember when I joined a monk, it was on Christmas, Christmas time. The monk told me, do you know the inner significance of the cross? Cut your capital I. I, capital, cut it. Cut it. That is the symbol of cross. I mean, cut your ego. If you really want to realize God. I still remember, it was in 1959 or 60, that monk told me on Christmas Day. Why we practice this new spiritual disciplines? Go to get rid of this ego. Because this ego binds us. We repeat mantra, we meditate, we study the scriptures, we go for tapasya. Finally, we find, we surrender ourselves to God. Shami Turyananda used to say, do you know, all these spiritual disciplines we do, they are nothing but tiring the wings, tiring the wings of, wings of the bird. Do you remember that parable of Sri Ramakrishna? <coughs> a bird sat on the mast of a ship. The ship left the harbor, entered the deep sea. Then the bird wants to come back to the shore. It flew to the east, could not find the shore. Its wings are very tired. It again came back to the ship. Thus it went to the south, north, west, all four directions and found no shore. The bird tried with its ego. Then it decided, I cannot go back to the shore without the help of this boat. So I must take refuge to this boat. That parable Sri Ramakrishna said. So all these spiritual disciplines, self-effort we make, finally comes God's grace. We realize God by the grace of God, surrendering our ego to Him. What is the meaning of the surrender? I like this few lines Swami Bhuteshananda Ji Maharaj said. Surrender is that stage when we give up all confidence in ourselves and completely depend on Him and give ourselves up to Him. Not even a little vanity should then remain within us. If we can remove, if we can renounce all our vanity and pride and humbly submit ourselves to Him, then our finite mind can feel His grace and become one with his infinity. That he meant that very clear. That is the way we understand what is surrender. In the Upanishadic language we also find a drop of water when it falls into a tank of pure water. A drop of pure water becomes falls into the big reservoir which is full of pure water, it becomes all pure water. Jatudakam asiktam 
शुद्धि शुद्धम जो तो उदा काम शुद्धि शुद्ध मशिकतम तदृगे भवभूति एवं मुनिर्जानित आत्मा भवभूति गौतम At that time, this individual that I consciousness I said becomes one with the cosmic consciousness. That is liberation, according to Vedanta. There are many kinds of pillows, many sizes of pillows, but inside all pillows is the cotton. We complain about our suffering, pain. disease death joys and sorrows it is the lord nanels as a snake i bite as a doctor i cure i remove that snake poison <laughs> everything every one is the manifestation of that cosmic god there is no being moving or unmoving which can exist without me krishna says in the gita god has made himself many eko aham bhushyam prajayeti i am one i shall be many because he wants to play so we are all his playmates but we forgot it we forgot god but without with forgetting god we have entered the world we have endless sufferings That is the reason Krishna was telling Arjuna, "Ma manushmana judda cha. Think of me, remember me, and fight. Remember me and fight. Then you have no problem. Fight me, fight God. Then the world, agisha, pore jago. Then we will be all right. But do you know what are we doing? We are doing first world, then God. First Maya, then God's Maya." it does not work that way <laughs> god is playing but you cannot understand his play i remember i was in college i went to see pc shortcuts magic a new empire theater in calcutta i still remember 1956 He was the greatest musician in the world. We are watching his magic, but we do not understand how is it possible. But the people who, those who work with him, they know the tricks. So if you know, want to know the play of Maya, <coughs> you will have to join in God's magic party. You see, Upanishad says, "Jala Vanisha." God is a great, great, great magician. This whole world is his magic, his play. When Krishna was born in that prison, Devaki and Bhushide saw Krishna, Shankar Chakra, Gadapad, Madhari Vishnu, that Vishnu, the great God, with all four hands and symbols and. Devaki said, "Lord, please remove Chief Abdul Mani. Withdraw your that divine form, because we Kongsha, my brother, will come and kill you." She forgot that supreme God, all powerful, nobody can kill him. But due to her affection for the son, she said, "Lord, please absorb your that form." is play sharanagati <clears throat> self surrender is the last stage in spiritual life perhaps you have seen you have read in the bhagavad gita krishna developed gyan yoga bhakti yoga raj yoga ध्यान योगा ऑल विभूति योगा ऑल योगा 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 एट द फ्लास्ट इन द फाइनल मोक्ष योगा द चैप्टर ऑन लिबरेशन ही सेज सर्वधर्मान परित्यज्य मामेकम शरण ब्रज 
हम तम सर्व पापी दो मोक्ष ईश्या मा शु गिव अप ऑल ऑफ योर ड्यूटीज ऑल धर्म ऑल अवर एक्टिविटीज एंड सर इंजर टू मी यू आर थिंकिंग दैट यू विल किल दिस पीपल एंड इन कर सीन इन दिस बैटल फील्ड हम तो हम सर्व पापी भू मोक्ष ईश्या में आई शाल प्रोटेक्ट यू फ्रॉम ऑल काइंड ऑफ सीन डू नॉट ग्रीव दैट इज गॉड्स प्रॉमिस टू ह्यूमन बींग्स There is six signs of sharanagati, six signs of self surrender. First, anukulaisa shankalpa. I shall work for God. This purbiti, I shall work for God. He gave me body, mind, everything. I want to serve Him. Chakura kuji, manuj make me a servant. I want to serve you. Second, pratikula, pratikula, vivarjanam, shan, forbidden work, murder, killing, committing adultery, telling lies. These are, should be shunned. these are the signs that then that means that you have surrendered yourself to god you engaged in the activities of god you shun the activities which is against spiritual life godly life third rakshishyati iti vishwasa god will protect me this faith when we read the purana prahlad was a jibuti of vishnu but his father was against vishnu His father could not stop his son from chanting God's name, so he threw him into the fire. Fire could not burn him. He knew that Krishna will protect me. He threw him from the mountain to the ocean. God saved his life. He got put. His father put him under the feet of the elephant. He was protected. that faith that god will protect me that is a sign of one of a third sign of self surrender atma nikshipa atma samarpan completely offer yourself to god in ramakrishna's language it is bakalma power of attorney girish ghosh came to sri ramakrishna Sri Ram Krishna, sir, what shall I do? Sri Ram Krishna said, "Well, you do whatever you are doing, acting, writing plays. That is fine. But shakal sundar, hurry nam karo. Mani morning and evening chant God's name. He kept quiet. Morning and evening. <laughs> he gets up at eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock in the morning. Whole night he is in on the stage in the theatre. He, he has no morning and evening. Well." Then before food you can th- you can think of God. Food I don't know when I eat my food. All right. Before you go to bed, think of God. Think of God. He kept quiet. All three times he kept quiet. Then Sri Ram Krishna said, "Oh, you cannot do anything. All right, give me your power of attorney. I shall do everything for you." Girish was so relieved. That my guru will take my responsibility. I will not do anything. I shall make fun, joy in this world. It did not work out that way. <laughs> Later on, he found you people are trying to think of God. I am trying to forget Him. Master possessed me in such a way I cannot think of anything else. I cannot do my duties. Even I cannot breathe by myself. I did not know what is the deep meaning of this power, giving the power of attorney. Just see, it is not so easy to <laughs> to surrender to God. Gopriti varnam tatha, and he will. He is the raksha karta. He is the savior. That faith is very important, as I said. Then atma samarpan. Sri Ramakrishna told another parable. 
if the child holds the hands of the father, the child may fall. But if the father holds the child of the son, the son will not fall. So let God hold you. Surrender to him, then he will hold you. And if you do not surrender, you hold yourself, then you take your own responsibility. And the sixth sign is Karpanya, Dunya Prakash. Look, I am weak, I am hypnotized by Maya. Only you can remove this ignorance, this attachment of this world from my mind. That is the way you can, you can pray. Because God is all powerful and you do not have that kind of power. So these are the six signs of self-surrender, according to the bhakti tradition. In Vedanta literature, we find Gyanapath and Bhaktipath, path of knowledge and path of devotion. Both paths are equally important. The path of knowledge, Aham, Nitya, Shuddha, Buddha, Mukta, Saitya, Savabha, Ananta, Aham, Ananta, Advayam Brahma. I am Nitya, eternal, Shuddha, pure, Buddha, awakened, Mukta, free, Saitya, when true reality by nature, Ananta, infinite, blissful, non dual self. That is my true nature. So here your ego is connected fully with Brahma. That is one path. And bhakti path, I am weak, I have been hypnotized by Maya, committed many mistakes in my life, I did many, many bad karma. But you are kapal mucha. You can remove the samaskaras, the karma, all bad karma you can erase. You have the power. You are the friends of the lowly. Tasmatam sharanang mamadunu bandhu. Therefore, O Lord, you are the friend of the lowly. Please save my life. In this way, a devotee prays to God. That is also one path. In bhakti, we find we can connect ourselves with God in three ways. First, Amitumar, I am yours. I am your servant. I am your son. I am your Devotee, in this way, offer your eye to God. That is one way. Second way, to me, Amar, you are mine. You are my goal. You are my protector. You are my Lord. You are my witness. You are my place of rest. You are my everything. I am yours. You are mine. And the third, Tadatma, I am you. That we find in the lives of the gopis. When Krishna disappeared during the Rash Lila because the gopis became proud, then the gopis were crying. Hmm? That is a beautiful word of the Bhagavatam. Rurudum Saswaram Rajan Krishna Darshana Lalosha. Krishna Darshana Lalosha, desiring the vision of money, vision of Krishna, they are crying loudly. You know, you not cry to God. <laughs> Beautiful. Rurudum Swasaram. Rurudum means crying. Swasaram means loudly. And they are acting, I am Krishna, you are Radha, and playing, playing, and they become one with Krishna. Then again, when their egos are effaced, again Krishna appears before them. That is called Ami to me. I am you. That is the highest experience of the Bhakti literature. It is true, in the Gita also we find similar teachings. Krishna was telling, raise yourself, yourself, 
is this it does not refer to this kind of unfriendliness uddhareta atmanatmanam don't yield to depression he was yuddhas of fight a week this is one kind of teaching is krishna gave and another kind of teaching krishna gave mame baje prabaddante mayame tam taranti te those who take refuge in me i help them to cross this turbulent ocean of maya that is another kind of teaching dadami buddhi yogam tam jena mam upayanti te i give them the buddhi yoga i connect their intellect with me so that they can reach me so you see in gita also we find two kinds of teachings one for the followers of the knowledge and another for the followers of devotion <coughs> as i said all problem is in ego i am rich i am learned i am a monk i am king queen president judge ceo singer musician i am i am i am <laughs> this i is dancing my wife my husband my children my family my car my family business my money this i and my are the whole world <laughs> see ram krishna they see you know in the cooking pot when you put a plant and potato and try to boil it they jump because of the heat you turn up the heat they collapse So all these eyes are dancing in this world because of that heat. Consciousness is behind, but we forgot that consciousness. A self surrender helps us to connect us with that consciousness. That is the reason we are very much disconnected from this, from the, from God. <laughs> Ego. Sir, I am going to go to visit Kurnagor, just opposite to Dakshineshwar. So he was getting down from the boat. The man was bathing and said, "Hey, young priest, how are you?" The way he talked, he asked, addressed Sri Ram Krishna. Sri Ram Krishna looked at him and said to his nephew, "Oridu, o taka hoye se, orido, he has some money." I can, hearing the voice of a person, I can say. The the way he addressed me, <laughs> ego. Some people become so egotistic. There is a beautiful Indian folklore. A a holy man was seated in his ashrama, and a little mice came and said, "The cat wants to eat me. Please help me. I will take refuge in you." Holy man said, "Well, you take refuge in you. Be a cat." So he made the cat become a cat. Then cat says, "Oh, that time the dog is trying to bite me. All right, you now be a dog." Then he says, "My goodness, the leopard is trying to attack me. All right, you be a leopard." Then he says, "The tiger wants to kill me. All right, be a tiger." when he became that mouse became a tiger he wanted to eat the holy man holy man said oh my goodness you have so much ego punar mushiko bhava again he put his hand on the tiger be a mouse again <laughs> that is a funny story <laughs> When our ego reaches its culmination, God tells us, "Be a mouse again." <laughs> Pride. You know, when we study Sri Ramakrishna's life, we marvel that his eye died forever. He went to his studio to see how the photographs are taken, and while reaching, returning, he was thinking, "This I am going to tell. Read this story, this experience I shall tell Kesha." He was contemplating that what he will speak to Kesha sitting in the horse carriage. All of a sudden, he was terribly 
Jizi. Uf. Mother. It is not I, you, you tell Kesha. Mother, you tell Kesha. Not I, I, I. Then his dizziness went away. You know, when we reach this kind of incidence, that how Sri Ramakrishna's experience became one with his physical and mental system. Amazing, amazing. When Swami Vivekananda went to Kashmir, seeing the broken temple of Kshir Bhavani, he said, Mother, if I were alive, I would not allow them to break this temple. Then he heard the divine voice. Whether I project you or you project me, if I wish I can build seven storage golden temple here. Swamiji got a great lesson. He said, henceforth, not I, Mother, Mother. It is the mother doing everything, that Mahashakti. We do not know the will of God. <laughs> he may leave somebody, put down someone. Always remember, he will raise a person who is humble. <laughs> Sometimes in our day-to-day -day life, we find some people may humiliate us. Remember that God is breaking our egos. Sometimes disease, our great teacher, was trying to make us humble, trying to remove our result of our bad karma. Do not react. We read in the Bible, for a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief, which is in Proverbs. In human life, in human journey, sometimes we, some make, we make some mistakes, but we again get up. If a child falls on the floor once, twice, while learning how to walk, the child does not give up and mother does not want her child to get up, to, to, to be on the floor all the time. She always helps, leaves the child, walk, walk, walk. We need grace and self-effort, both. Humility. Water doesn't accumulate on the top of the hill, it comes to the ground, the lower plane. When I was a student, I read the life of Saint Durga Charanak, a household disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. His self surrender is 100%, not 99%. I marvel that life. If you are interested, you can read his life in They Live With God. You will be amazed. Sri Ramakrishna says, this man has no ego. If you have terrible colic pain coming from the market, oof, blessed is the colic pain, it reminds me of Sri Ramakrishna. A cat fell on his eyes and his wife was thinking, my goodness, my husband will be blind. Don't worry. Sri Ramakrishna will take care of me. A snake beat him. He said, it will be all right. God is doing everything for me. You know the way he surrendered, it is amazing. He used to, all the time, he used to move around with folded hands. Somebody asked, why do you do that? Well, I'm a bhute bhute ishar ke dekhi. I see God in every being. So I salute every one of them. That is the culmination, acme, of self-surrender. We learned, the, we heard the another story of a Vaishnava saint in Puri. He had terrible dysentery, could not go to the bathroom. A little boy came, Stam began to nurse him, clean him. 
immediately recognized it is Lord as a boy came to serve him. Lord, why are you doing all these things for me? Then Krishna answered, it is the result of your karma. I cannot take away that karma, but I can serve you. That is the result of Saranagati. Sometimes God comes and serves the devotees. Once Sri Ramakrishna was walking on the street in Kamarpukur. The place was flooded due to rain. So a fish, a catfish was crawling, uh, passing over the road and that fish was near the Ramakrishna's feet. Sri Ramakrishna grabbed it and put it into the pond. Then he came back and told Rida, his nephew, that this thing happened. Uncle, why did not bring the fish at home? We could have a fish soup. Oh no, Ridu. That fish took refuge in me. That fish was near my feet and was moving around. So I saved that fish. It happened in Dakshinishwar. When Swami Ambikananda's mother came to Dakshinishwar, Sri Ramakrishna said, Hello, I have a request to you. Will you help me? Well, what, sir? Of course I shall help you. You see, in Dukshinisha temple garden, there is a cat and it has three, four kitchens. And the temple guards hit them. And they come and stay under my cot and they mew, mew, mew. They took refuge in me. Will you please take this cat to your home? We have a big family. Perhaps you can give them some food. Of course, sir, I shall take all cats to my home. Wherever Sri Ramakrishna met Nistarini Devi and said, Hello, how are those cats? Are you feeding them well? well? Yes, sir. Please remember, they took refuge in me. That is the way Sri Ramakrishna helped the Jabhujis. Those who take in Ramakrishna, Ramakrishna will protect, him, protect them. Somebody asked Bigyan Maharaj that, Maharaj, who is self surrender I do not know. I have no time to practice spiritual disciplines too long. Do you know what he said? I love that one. And I, I practice it. He said, before you go to bed, you lie down on the floor, on the Shastanga pronoun, and repeat three times to Sri Ramakrishna, Saranagatu, Saranagatu, Saranagatu. Master, I take refuge in you, I take refuge in you, I take refuge. Then go to bed. Very good instruction to self or Self-surrender. Self-surrender does not mean that I shall not do anything, God will do everything to me. Well, Ramakrishna's case was different. But we, he was an avatar, he is surrendered 100%. But we have ego. We, some portion we surrender, some portion we do about ourselves. Because God, God gave us hands and feet and brain to work. So. We will have to exalt something that we find in the Bhagavad Gita. When Arjuna says, I shall not fight, or Krishna says, your very nature will force you to fight. Mitha Babushaya, your very resolution is wrong. And if you do not listen to me, you will be just fine. Surrender yourself fully to God. As I said, self-surrender is the last escape in his spiritual life. In our village, we saw how they make rye, um, dal, lentil, or which, how they make, how they grind it. Here is a piece of stone slab over that another stone slab, and here is a hole, and here is a knob, and with the connected with a wooden knob, and you put your corn or anything there, and then you rotate this slab and all will be crushed and the, the lentil will break and the, 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 the skin will go away and they make flour also, stone grinding flour as we have seen. But there are some kernels by through manipulation go into the knob, they will never be crushed. So in this world, 
we are grinded by this maya but if you go to the knob in the center position you will never be crushed that means take refuge in god mom sri ram krishna said meditate on the madhyan ko be mone bone kone kone means corner corner means in the corner if you put you cannot put a square thing you will have to put a tripod like this that means your front is god right side left side both are god the meditate that way bone means not forest bone means solitude and mon mind mind means mind is the king of the all senses all senses function at the behest of the mind <coughs> so you know it is a very beautiful word i was reading one of our devotee's book mon a ma don't know mon means mind and if you reverse it no ma no ma means no ma means i bow down to you another no ma means no ma ma not mine check this world as this way this world is not mine it belongs to god that is the way you can transform yourself Surrender. I remember it was 1977. I went to India from Hollywood. So Shami Gombiranand Ji was young secretary. He was asking me, "How many problems do you have?" I said, "Maharaj, I do not have any personal problem by the gaze of the master, but I have the ashrama problem and the jabuji's problem." Then I asked, "How many problems do you have?" Oh, you want to know my problem? Every day I open the mail, I find thirty to thirty-five problems. Because he was the general secretary, all centers of the Ramakrishna order, the monks and the centers, all problems comes to the headquarters. So he had to make a decision. He had to solve the problems. With of course he has secretaries. So I asked Maharaj, how do you solve the problems? He smiled and said. Thakur solves the problem. Still, I remember Thakur solves the problem. If you surrender to God, God will solve your problem. Thank you very much. Tumi eva mata cha pita tumi eva tumi eva bandhu sha saka tumi eva tumi eva vidya drivinam tumi eva tumi eva sarvam mama deva deva. Lord, thou art my father. Thou art my father. Thou art my friend. Thou art my companion. Thou art my wealth. Thou art my learning. Thou art my all in all, O Lord. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Be on your guard.